Hi, Internet. It's been a while. Forgive me while I read you something that I wrote recently. Recently, a morbidly obese woman fell on her two-year-old nephew and killed him. At 800-some pounds, she was confined to her home and could barely walk, let alone control a fall onto the child whose skull she crushed. The police had to come to her bedroom to charge her with murder, but she is already in a prison. It seems that there are more and more examples of what used to be shocking Discovery Channel fodder. People who are so morbidly obese that they are bedridden, they can do nothing for themselves. They can't walk, let alone go to the bathroom. I know of no job that you can hold in that condition, so I can only assume that they are not bringing in an income with which to pay a caregiver. So someone in their life is enabling them to be that way. Someone is bringing them food, otherwise instead of being so fat they can hardly move, they would starve. Even if they ordered out for pizza, someone's got to walk to the door, pay for it, and bring it to them. Their entire existence is based on massive, massive consumption. No productivity, just chronic, destructive consumption that will lead, in most cases, to their ultimate demise. It reminds me a little bit of our economy. In a way, our expanding waistlines and our whining about body acceptance and moaning about the various ailments that come with extravagant consumption are interesting byproducts of our overconsumption. We live in a consumption-based economy, or service economy, as opposed to a manufacturing or production-based economy now. We've lost a ton of factory jobs in recent memory due to profit-killing regulatory burdens here and or cheaper, easier labor environments overseas. We now paint each other's nails and buy cheap things at Walmart made in Asia. Actually, most of my manicurists are Asian as well, so what is it we do exactly? Shuffle around TPS reports, uh, flip burgers, scratch each other's backs, I don't know, something. But it's not manufacturing or making anything, really. Except maybe software or weaponry stuff. You know, stuff that you have to have like a master's degree or better to do. No, we're more and more made up of services. Many analysts think an economy based solely on spending money is just as valid an economy as any. The government affirms this by sending us checks when market indicators hint that we might be trying to get out of bed. I mean, debt a consumer bailout of sorts. But is it really just as valid? Would the world economy really collapse if we stop consuming? What about the caregiver to the morbidly obese person? When the patient dies, does the caregiver now starve because they've lost their job feeding an unproductive person to death at their own expense? No. Now, economically speaking, they are freed up to seek more productive things to do with that time. It will be the same with the global economy when U.S. consumers stop their gluttony. We will stop being a type of broken window. The question is, will we stop overconsuming because we found the willpower to change to a healthier lifestyle, one of production and saving, and not beating up on our businesses with overburdensome job-killing regulation, or will we just die of massive coronary thrombosis? In other words, co complete economic collapse. Our debt is like a thousand pounds of flesh imprisoning us in our own body. It's no sin to borrow and have debt per se, but it is one thing to borrow investment capital to build a factory, quite another to ship that factory off to some other economy and keep borrowing so that we can have a flat screen TV instead. Consider David Mesa, whose story is not uncommon. David Mesa, 47, worked 14 years assembling heavy-duty trucks for the Freightliner Truck Company. But when most of the production operations were moved to Mexico, he was laid off in March 2007. Now, I'm not saying that American workers are lazy. No, we work our butts off. There are thousands of David Mesas out there who would love to still be working, but sadly, he is now just another economic muscle that will atrophy from disuse. Our economy on the whole has stopped producing hard goods. We import everything and basically export dollars and weapons now. And you wonder why our military industrial complex rules the world and why all the saber rattling. Sure, we could talk and negotiate for peace, but war is so much more expensive. 
but I digress. We consume massive amounts of stuff and we don't make anything anymore. We have to pay for all of this stuff with value, not just money. Money you can print all day long, and it will continue to buy more stuff for a while, but soon China will realize the position they are in when they keep buying our securities and sending goods. They are bringing us buckets and buckets of fried chicken and getting nothing in return. Nothing but promises that someday we'll get out of bed, walk again, get a job, and pay them back. We keep promising, but will they keep believing? Oh, and here's a man in the sidebar who has actually lost 500 pounds and might break the overconsumption model the not six foot underway. He lives in Mexico. Oh, and this is Molly, by the way. She just got her hair cut yesterday at a, a very froofy DC salon. So yeah, she's a city dog and she loves it. Yes. And uh, you want to see the new digs? I'll show you a little bit. What do we got here? That's the window where Paco's cage is. Nice little sun window. So you can see we haven't really had the heart to um, put our pictures back on the wall again. It's hard to move in, move out, move in again. After a while, you just you get really tired. Um, but this is my favorite part. This is the new kitchen, which it's a mess right now, but you can kind of see that it's it's a nice it's a nice kitchen. Anyway, things are slowly settling down. You know, it's a real estate. I can't believe <laughs> the move was this much. Ah, but uh, yeah. Um, and. Please don't take what I just wrote and read to you as, like, insensitive to, to obese people. I didn't mean it that way. It's, it's just a metaphor that I was extending, so it's not really a commentary on them. It's just, it's, it, it's, it's maybe a little bit of a comparison to elucidate the situation our economy is in and an interesting parallel in society. FYI, Biggest Loser is, like, my favorite show ever. Anyway. I'm babbling. I'm gonna say goodbye now. <laughs>